that's it. Enough is enough. I've, do you know what? I've just had it. Had it now. Got to change. Warning. 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 You are entering into the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. Clough. Too late. Personal development unplugged. Hey, have you ever waited? Waited until what you want is a certainty, an absolute certainty. And then when you decided, it wasn't there anymore because you'd waited too long. You know, have you ever had this in your mind where you look back and you go, do you know what? If only I'd spent that little bit of time each week, each month, each day, things would have been so much different. I'd be like an expert or I'd, my skill level would be so much more or I'd know so many more people or whatever your, your goal would be. Hmm. I have that quite often. And that's what I've, what's been, not, it's, oh, I guess it has been troubling me, but this is what I've been trying to think about. Things have been getting in the way and all sorts of stuff has been happening in a way that's like putting up this bloody barrier. And I know it's me putting up the barrier. I've got that now. I've got it this morning. But you see, I was also thinking, you now I do hypnotherapy. And I help people do some wonderful changes. But also, there are people like... I work with smokers who want to stop smoking. But there's that one person. And there's not one, there's loads of them. That smoker. You must know them. That decides one day. That's it. That's enough. I'm not going to do it anymore. They crumple up their packet. They don't have any side effects. They don't have any cravings. They don't put a weight. They don't do anything that is any different other than stop smoking and start enjoying their life even more. You know that type of person? You know, it's when they get to the... They make a decision where there's no turning back in their head. There's no turning back. It's just not acceptable. It's just not them. You know, it's what I call... I'm not going to swear, but it's the effort. Enough is enough stage. And sometimes you have to say that out loud. Obviously not with people around because that's rude. And put that expletive out there sometimes because it really does set your mind saying this is enough is enough. Because we talked a long time ago about the book called Effort. But that was about dealing with issues going on. But this is about saying enough is enough. You see, there is no certainty in any result. Absolutely no certainty. And I know people talk about the the traits of, of the human being, us, that we need certainty. But we also need uncertainty because if everything is totally certain, it's boring. And also, guess what? As we said, you miss out. But uncertainty is that spice. Because if we just knew what was going to happen, we probably wouldn't do it. Because we need that uncertainty, that excitement. We've got to put it all together because I want to put it into a way that we get enough is enough. And now I'm prepared to do whatever it takes. And that's the statement, to do whatever it takes. When I talk to my client, client, I, I have well, occasionally more than one. But when I speak to my clients on a, on a consultation, I explain things about hypnotherapy, hypnosis, the way I work, my little philosophy of of rapid change. But it comes down to, I say, you know, you don't have to believe what I say. It's got to feel that it may well be the right direction because you've got to have some buy-in. But the real buy-in you have to do is to have prepared to do whatever it takes mentality. And if you can come to me and work with that, I'm prepared to do whatever it takes because the way I do therapy is different to a lot of people. But it just well, it just seems to work. But you have to have that mentality because I also have that mentality when I'm working with a client. I'm prepared to do whatever it takes now to guide that client to grasp hold of whatever they want, to let go of whatever they want and get the results whatever they want and actually 
I'm prepared to do whatever it want, whatever it needs now, whatever it takes to get even more from that. And to me, that's one of the ultimate uh, ingredients for the recipe of success. Because you see, when you listen to, let's say in inverted brackets, commas, whatever, you know, the air quotes, what people do. I hate that. Don't you just hate, hate, hate air quotes? But anyway, here's an air quote for you. Successful people. Because I don't know what success, a success, I get the words out, Cluffy, a successful person is. I know in my mind what they are. And in other minds, they're different things. But it's not always about having financial riches, having material riches. It's having a rich life. A life of enjoyment and to some extent, to a great extent, I guess, being at peace with the life that you have and enjoying that peace. They all seem to have this, I'm prepared to do whatever it takes in a natural form. And it doesn't have to be aggressive. It's just that inner strength, that like inner warrior strength that says, no, I'm prepared to do whatever it takes because this is important to me and I'm not going to be put off. Yes, I know it's not certain. The results aren't certain. But what is certain is I'm prepared to do whatever it takes. And with that, there's always a way and I will succeed. Now to me, that's where we, well, no, I know, that's where I want to go. Do you want to come along with me? Come along for this, you know, we call it challenges or Let's have a drill. No, we don't want to drill. Let's commit together, if you want to, to take on this. I'm prepared to do whatever it takes. If I can do it in one place, in the therapy room, well, in that case, I can do it anywhere, can't I? Where do you have that? That will to do whatever it takes? Because I know you've got it somewhere. Lots of places probably. You just don't realise it. They're the things that you, when you just do it, you do it. And there's maybe even a challenge, but you step up to the plate. You bring yourself 100% into the, well, maybe a challenge if you want. It's a challenge to you, but hey, you succeed. And even if you don't get exactly what you wanted, you know there's a satisfaction of putting, have, or having put, a hundred and plus percent into to trying to achieve it, but also noticing that it wasn't a failure, but noticing the results you get and then using those results because a lot of the time those so-called failures, the results that we get are probably the best things that we could ever have because one thing, if it's not what you want, you've learned and you've learned massively well. But generally those so-called failures are actually successes hiding in plain sight. It's like a long time ago where I had a, a massive fallout with one company and I thought my world was finished because there's a lot of psychological stuff going on and I didn't know how to deal with it then. I couldn't handle it and it made me feel really bad and I left thinking, oh, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. I've got my responsibilities, I've got family, I've got lots of things going on and this is the end. And I must admit, I wallowed for a little while. I wallowed in that uncertainty. And I also wallowed, wallowed, wallowed in this lack of confidence. Because it was as if that lack of confidence was helping me stay safe again. Which it obviously wasn't, because I wasn't taking on the opportunities that were, they were coming at me right, left and centre, because I had a lot of great friends and I, and I had a reputation. I had a lot of people coming and offering me, me work, but I just couldn't take it. And then, I've spoken about this before, a friend really just grabbed hold of me and said, come on, Paul, this is what you're going to do, whatever it takes. And he put himself on the line. And then, like a miracle happened, a couple of months later, someone else turned up in my life. Boom. And it was the best thing that ever happened to me. And I met some wonderful people through that. And then from that, I got into NLP, hypnosis, trainers training, meeting wonderful people. So that's a story. And we can tell that story. I'll tell that story a hundred times, a million times, because it's so inspirational to me to remember that. But anyway, that's beside the point, because a lot of that time I was doing whatever it takes. 
when I had that wonderful opportunity, me and this other guy, Mike, we got this company running and we did whatever it takes. There was no certainty in that. And one part, that was the most wonderful thing of it. Once I got my confidence back, there was no uncer- there was no certainty because we didn't want certainty. We wanted, we didn't know what was possible. Go back to that again because you don't know what's impossible and we didn't know what was possible. So we just went for supposedly the impossible and we did it. So there you go. But that's, having said all of that, How can we do, how can we use this, this challenge? Because I always have in my little notes when I think about these things, I have this little meta box. What I'm trying to talk about. What is the, you know, the one little thing right up there taking a different perspective that groups us all together. And I wrote down one, two, three, four, five words. So I had to count them up because one's two and one's three. Difficult. The first one was, with a big exclamation mark, was, it's time. Because it is, right now. And the other one was, no more waiting. Because it's time. So, how are we going to do this? It's a challenge. Because it is a challenge. But it's a challenge which is so worthwhile. So to do this, we, you know, we could go the whole hog and try to overwhelm ourselves and that would be absolutely silly wouldn't it because we've done it before we've gone 100 percent trying to do 10 20 different things because this is the time and we've done a bad job on each one or a poor job not a bad job a poor job on each one because we spread ourselves too thin we've got disillusioned overwhelmed and let it go so we're going to start small start small and then work big work smart because when you start small, we're going to get some successes. And we're suddenly going to find that small can be really quite big anyway. But we just need to get our muscles to go. We've got to get that muscle memory. We've got to lead our unconscious mind and our muscles to go in a direction. So we've got to lead them. Tell them, this is where we want to go. Then we're going to let them just go absolutely free. So. This is what I'm going to suggest, and this is what I'm going to do. Enough is enough effort. I know I have a number of things that I want to change in my life. Small things that I know will create massive pleasure for me. And if I'm gaining massive pleasure, so will everyone around me. So, But the thing is, what I need to do first is, you know, get our wonderful little friend. Yes, we've got our best friend inside, but the other little friend outside is our Jenny Journal or Billy Book or Billy Book, where did he come from? <laughs> Whatever name you, you call your Billy Book Journal, Jenny, and just throw some thoughts out there, things that you've in the past always wanted to, to do, you haven't done, but if you did do them, they'd have made a massive change, made some massive uh, benefits to you. And then, right now, what would you like to do differently? Either stop doing things or start doing things. And normally you want to start because then the other ones will stop anyway. And then, what would you like to do in the future? How would you like to be in the future? For me, I still come back to to one or two things. I want to go back into my art. I want to go back into my guitar playing. I want to go back into my ukulele playing. Things like that. I want to go back into reading. I want to go back into in depth thinking all that I've got loads of stuff and I think that's suddenly why I suddenly turn down close in because it's just too much all in one go but I just started to put those into a journal and then what I'm going to do is just pick one pick one because the others will wait a day or two we're not going to delay them very long but we need to pick one and then when we pick one, we're going to find out one or two things. Before we start to decide our steps we're going to do, we need to get inside this. And even so, you, know, you might even say, well, I don't even know what I want. Here's one thing. You could just decide to plan. Because this is all to do with planning. So, you know, if you're going all over the place and not quite getting all the stuff you want doing, 
or you need a bit more um, structure into your week, maybe it's your challenge to start off with is, the first baby set step is, I need to plan my week, my day, into the things that are really important. But the thing is, when you choose one and decide, effort, enough's enough, and I'm prepared to do whatever it takes. Before you do that, I want you to think of the why. Why is this important to you? Why is this important to you? Because if you know why it's important in a conscious way, you'll also get the feeling of that feeling of the wish fulfilled because when you know why it's important to you, that will that importance will start a, like a fire inside, an energy. And the thing is we need to also, we've, and we've talked about this before, we need to know the why, the why, the why. So why is this important to you? You can get an answer. And why is that important to you? And you'll get an answer. And maybe just for a third time, when why is that answer important to you? And notice if those, those reasons are towards getting something positive, or away from something negative. Because it, sometimes things things sound really positive until you get to the second or third. And then it's, you know, because I, I won't be ill. You know, I want to go to the gym. I want to get really fit because I don't want to be ill anymore. Well, that don't want to be ill isn't away from, isn't it? It's not towards health. It's away from dis-ease and ill health. And you might need to do a little bit of work on that just to change it into the positive. So what would it be? What could it be? And when you get the right positive that really, you know, tunes in with you, that resonates with you, that may be all you need to do. There may be other processes that you need to do. And if you need help with that, just come along, send me that email. I've actually set up a new email on the personaldevelopmentunplugged.com website. And it's just called feedback at personaldevelopmentunplugged.com. Emails don't go anywhere. I don't save them. I don't do anything. You just come along, you write some notes, and then I can either respond to you or I'll respond to you verbally, auditory, right here. But to know that you've got a real positive reason for doing this one thing. And then we can start to look at what are the smaller steps. But to find a small step, obviously, we want to know what the end goal is. So we know where we are, but how would you really like it? Say if you went out three months, a year, two years, however, however long, and you notice that final step when you're really getting what you want, you're doing what you want, even if it's only I'm progressing greatly now, so excited, get that feeling. And when you get that feeling, you can decide what your baby step will be because it'll still have that feeling. Because if you take too big a step, and we've talked about baby steps before, that feeling diminishes. And that that's just telling you. Your unconscious mind is saying, whoa, I know you're prepared to do whatever it takes. I know enough is enough. But this is too big. This is where we've fallen down before. So pull it back. You know, as I say, rein your neck in a little bit. Be satisfied with a small baby step to start off with. And then the next and the next. And you'll suddenly find you're leaping mountains. Now, once you've got that goal and you know your intention, the intention that is, is, a, is in some, a lot of extent is the feeling that you'll feel, feel when you have that goal, when the wish fulfilled is fulfilled, then write it down, plan your baby steps, and then follow those wonderful five steps of success. And I've talked about it a number of times. I add it into a lot of the podcasts. What are they? First one, know your goal. Know where you want to go. And this is what we just said. Our and make sure you know that it's a, to a towards. You have all the wonderful reasons, the values that's important to you. And that's setting your intention. And then take action. And I always say massive intuitive action. But I want massive action is energy for me. So Put all that energy into that baby step. As I talked to you before, every step that you take 
have in your mind to excel, to do the best you and bring the best you to that baby step. And then you'll see those steps are going to go bigger, quicker. And when you're taking that massive, intuitive action, because that's where a lot of people fall down, they don't take any action, they just intellectual just think, but you're taking massive, intuitive action on that baby step with the feeling of the wish fulfilled and knowing the intention and your values, then being aware, being aware of your progress. So you've got to measure it somehow. And I don't know how you measure it. You could measure it, am I just doing those steps? So if it's to, uh, for me, it might be I want to make sure I read. Read some books and a particular set of books so much per day, 20 minutes a day. Am I doing it? I mean, one of my silly little ones is to drink more water. I get criticized so much because I very rarely drink water. And you can tell. Measure yourself every day, every week. Is it working? Because I know once I do that, it will become a habit. Just setting up the habit. Once you've got that awareness of where you are, if you're not quite on the direction where you want to be, you're learning. Learning, is this actually, was the goal actually to go this way? Is there a better better goal now? Or no, I've got to pull myself back. Which means you're going to be flexible. Flexible in your thoughts, flexible in your actions, flexible in your behaviours. And go round those obstacles if there's an obstacle. You can go up, over, through, round, wherever. Ask people for help. There are so many different ways to, to get back on track. And when you have that wonderful flexibility, because you know where you are, you can really now just notice you can act from a psychology and a physiology of excellence, which means you're going to act as if. Act as if, first of all, with that feeling of the wish fulfilled. Act as if with effort. Enough is enough. And more importantly, I'm prepared to do whatever it takes because there's always a way. And then take on that psychology of, of how you would be as if you had the goal already. It's all you have to do. So if you're, I don't know, say you're practicing a guitar, you act as if you can play the guitar. You've seen people play. So you don't slump, you sit up, you excel. It's what we said before, excel in every movement that you do, everything that you do. Because if you can excel and have that mindset of excelling, because that's what people do when they're prepared to do whatever it takes, you will move mountains, you will jump mountains, you will go round mountains, you will create the biggest goals that you'll, well, you can't imagine, I don't believe, the goals that you can, you, that you will achieve because you'll surpass that imagination, and then that will create an a even bigger muscle of imagination. Imagineering will just continue to grow, which means you'll find even more, more wonderful things. And all started from this little seed that we sown about doing one thing. Because after a few days, we can get another one going, and then another one. And all of a sudden, the first one just drops into our habit becomes a really good habit and then the second one drops into our habit and then when we plan our week we just know what we're going to do we're just planning these things and they just come naturally become an awesome person by being who you really are inside awesome because the thing is even if you knew you were awesome and i know you you are awesome but you're even more than that because whatever you think you are you're more than that and when you step up to that next level and you go, oh, this is what I think I am. Guess what? You're more than that. This is, oh man, this is such a good thing that we're going to be doing together. All through, enough is enough. I'm prepared to do whatever it takes. Let me know. Let me know what you chose. If you would, share it with me. Even if, if I... Bring it back onto the podcast. Never use your real name anyway. You'll have a bonky name. <laughs> so that's something to look forward to. Email me, either at paul at paulclough.co.uk or better still, feedback at personaldevelopmentunplugged.com. 
there you go. Let's take up this little challenge together and I'll report back to you in a couple of weeks' time of how I've, what I started and how I progressed. Okay? I'd love it if you do the same. And of course, as we say, if you got something out of this and if you didn't, man, were, were, you, were you listening? But I'm sure there's something you got out of this. And I'm sure, and I really hope that you have gotten, gotten things, snippets, takeaways, uh, a couple of ahas in previous podcasts. If you have, please share them. I'd love you to share them with me, but also, more importantly, share them with your best friend. Share them with just with one person. One person who you think it will make a difference to. Because you'll never know how far the ripples of that change will go. And we will create a wonderful community, the Personal Development Unplugged Community, which you are a number one member. Okay? Do that. That would be absolutely awesome. Another way to share, as I always say, is to subscribe on whatever platform you use to, to subscribe so you get these uh, longer podcasts and the FMQs, the five-minute quickies on Wednesdays and Saturday mornings. Goes two FM, FMQs and then a longer podcast. Two five-minute quickies and then a longer podcast. And all that hypnosis. Oh, by the way, if you do subscribe, even if you don't, I'd love you to put a review. A review on, say, iTunes. You do a great review. It's another way of spreading the word because when people search, it either comes higher up in the search, but also when they do find it, they get a good feeling from it. And then they can join in. And then they can spread the word. All because of you and sowing that seed. And remember, hypnosis tracks. You can get all my free hypnosis tracks at paulcloughonline.com forward slash podcast. There's also some paid programs there. I know. That's what I do. I have to make a living somehow. But also, have a look around those paid programs because a lot of them you get, uh, you certainly get a money back guarantee. So you've got nothing to lose, everything to gain. There's also some periods of time when you get that. There's a lot of things changing. There's some really great hypnosis tracks on there to, to, you can purchase, which are different. Different. I don't think you'll find them anywhere else. And I've put an awful lot of, uh, as I say, intention into them to give you the right results. But anyway, the free hypnosis though, paulcloughonline.com forward slash podcast. There's a load of uh, free hypnosis tracks and there's a f- well, you get a, f- a few free hypnosis tracks sent your way which aren't on that list for you to download. And I'll keep continuing to add to them anyway. Let me know how you get on. Until the very, very next time. Because I will be back. Look forward to speaking to you. Bye-bye now. Warning, you are now leaving the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. It's time to fly on your own. Be brave, my friend. Personal Development Unplugged.